So here's hoping that our second lesson recording goes a little bit more smoothly than our first lesson recording. That was pretty brutal. So we're going to hope for the best here. I'm going to try to keep it under 10 minutes for you because I know that first one's a little long. So we're still looking at representing patterns. Um, in this lesson, um, we're going to be working kind of backwards from lesson one. So in lesson one, I gave you the drawing and then you built the table and you went to the equation, the expression, and put in words and all that kind of stuff. Um, this time, I'm going to give you either the written relationship or the table or something like that. And you will need to come up with what the pattern looks like. And um, also, I'm going to give you a table and I'm going to ask you to find the relationship or the equation that matches that table. So looking at our first example, um, a beaded necklace has an arc shaped design, like a rainbow design. Row one has seven red beads. Row two has five additional beads that are all green. Row three has five additional beads that are all blue. The pattern then repeats, adding five beads of each row. And I would assume that it would go like red, blue, uh, green, blue, red, green, blue, red, green, blue. So draw a pattern or picture to represent the first four rows. So I think that you should draw that. Okay, so there's row one and it has seven red beads. And then the next row is going to have uh, the same, but it's going to have five beads that are green. So let's add that in. Okay, and then the next row again. Has the same, but then it adds uh, five blue. Okay, and so on and so on and so on. And then you can draw the fourth row. I'm not going to draw the fourth row. You could draw the fourth row. So then it says make a table value showing the number of beads in relation to the row number. So let's use R and let's use um, B for beads. So row number is independent. It is not determined the number uh, is not determined by the number of beads. So this is going to be row number. That's going to be R, and this is the number of beads. Uh, oops, we said B, not N. Again, it's up to you what letters you pick. Just make sure you identify them. So we have row, uh, let's go row 0, 1, 2, 3, and then 4. And so row 1 had 7. We added 5 more, so there are 12. And then we added 5 more, 17. And then if you added 5 more again, you should get 22. So hopefully you notice a pattern in those numbers. Um, if we were going to work backwards to row 0, we would need to subtract 1, right? Make us to 0. Um, our pattern was going up by 5, so to go backwards to row 0, we have to do the opposite. We're going to subtract 5, so we would get 2. So that means technically if there was a row 0, there would be 2 beads in it, but that doesn't make for a very nice necklace, so it probably doesn't have a row 0. But to help us with our equation, it'll be helpful to have. So now it says which equation represents the pattern between the row number and the number of beads. Well, whatever we are increasing by is our coefficient. So we are going 5 times the row number. And then we look to row 0 to tell us what the constant is. This shows us the constant. And our constant, constant is plus 2. So the number of beads is equal to 5 times the row number plus 2. If you remember from lesson 1, we double checked and we were wrong. So let's double check and make sure we're good. So we're going to go 1 times 5 is 5 plus 2. That gives us 7, so it works. 2 times 5 is 10 plus 2 is 12. It works. 3 times 5. 15 plus 2 is 17, 4 times 5 plus 2 is 22. So yeah, our pattern works for every row in our table. So that means we have a good equation. It matches the data. 
So then how many beads would be in row 14? And how many would be in row 38? I'm going to ask you to do those two on your own. They're very similar to lesson one. And I think that you can do those by yourself. Okay, so um, on these tables, two of the tables have the data given but not the equation and then the other two have the equation given and not the data. So we're gonna we're gonna uh, use what we have to help us fill in the missing piece. So for letter A, we don't know the equation. We do know that P is dependent, so P is equal to whatever happens to K. And so we need to figure out what that is. So first we look and see, okay, well, have they set it up as a linear equation? Have they put it sequentially? So when I look at K, yeah, K is increasing by a constant amount. It's going up by one every time, that's good. So it's in sequential order. So then we can look at P and see, okay, well, what um, is the pattern that it's following? And it's increasing by five each time. Hopefully you notice this pattern is very similar to the pattern we just did. Okay, and so that means that plus five is our multiplier. So we are going five times the independent variable. To figure out what our uh, constant is, we're going to go backwards. So we're going to go to row zero. So if we went to row zero, we would go the opposite. So we're going to subtract five. So we would get a value of plus two. So 5k plus 2, and then we could double check. Um, and this is the same pattern that we had in the last, just with a different variable. Looking at B, you are given the equation, and we need to figure out the missing values. So we're going to substitute what we do know to find what we don't know. So y is equal to 6 times x minus 8. So for the first one, y is equal to 6 times 1 minus 8. So y is equal to 6 take away 8, so y is negative 2. I guess I need to write the y equals to there. Positive 1, there we go. 6 times 1 minus 8 is negative 2. And we're multiplying before we subtract. Do the same thing if x is 2. So 6 times 2 take away 8, so 12 take away 8 gets us a value of 4. Do the same on the next one. 6 times 3 minus 8. 6 times 3 is 18. Minus 8 is plus 10. Okay, keep going. 6 times 4 is 24. Take away 8 is 16. And 6 times 5 minus 8, so 30. Take away 8 is 22. So just to double check, take a, take a look at where we're going up by. So we're going up plus 6, plus 6, plus 6, plus 6. And 6 was our coefficient. And if we go back to row 0, so if we put a row 0 in here, so instead of plusing 6, we minus 6. Negative 2 take away 6 would be negative 8. And that is our constant. Okay. I'm going to leave you C and D to do on your own as well. And we are going to check these together tomorrow. Please give them a try. Please show evidence of your work as well. I don't want to just see something written down without any proof to back it up.